this week on One Devotion. Follow the arc of this sensational season from opening day until the lifting of the trophy. See how this month's championship game continued a five-year run of unforgettable Final Four rallies. Check out the plays we've chosen as the very best among so many great ones this season. And hear why the players and coaches believe the EuroLeague's best is yet to come, starting in just a few months. By any measure at all, the just-completed 2015-16 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season was truly one to remember. Packed with great action, huge crowds and exciting surprises, before it finished with one of the most dramatic Final Fours ever. The season started with one surprise, Unica Ham Malaga staying undefeated longer than any team thanks to prestige road wins over Maccabi Tel Aviv and Seska Moscow, as forward Mindaugas Kuzminskas played a starring role. We are undefeated and, you know, we're excited for that, but, you know, this is just first round and we have lots of things to do, so, you know, we're excited, but, you know, we, we're not going to stop. Surprises were the new normal in the regular season, as the EuroLeague's previous two champions struggled against elimination. In the end, Maccabi lost that struggle in a last-chance game to newcomer Darushafaka Dos Istanbul and missed the top 16 for the first time ever. Real Madrid needed to win its final three games to advance, but did so in style, setting a new EuroLeague assists record with 36 in the last of them. Fenerbahce Istanbul, Olympiakos Pireus and Seska all won regular season groups, as did Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar after stopping FC Barcelona Lassa, a team it would meet again under dramatic circumstances. The top 16 started with a bang, as Alexei Shved's game winner lifted Himki Moscow region past the local rival Seska in a killer Group F. Himki Ambrosa Baskets Bamberg, which had never won a top 16 game before, would finish with 7-7 seven and seven records, but neither survived one of European basketball's toughest groups ever. There was not a lot to think about. We got the last offense and coach wrote the play for me and uh, my teammates believe in my shot, so I have to believe in too. So I took the shot and I scored and thanks to teammates for believing me. A dominant Fenerbahce knocked off all of its Group F opponents on the first try and despite injury to superstar Jan Vesely, clinched first place three weeks early. Malcolm Delaney led Lokomotiv to home court advantage, going into its first playoffs alongside Panathinaikos Athens. And another newcomer, always entertaining Servena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade. Back in ultra tight Group F, Barcelona forward Justin Dolman took centre stage, first scoring 26 points and the game winning buzzer beater against arch rival Madrid, and then shocking Sesca with five points in the dying seconds of overtime. Heck of a feeling. Uh, there at the end, my teammates found me to hit that three, tied the game, and uh, was able to steal the ball and hit a game winner. Anything's possible, you got to believe till the end. In a group with five former champions, the big surprise was Laboral Kucha Vittoria Gasteis. With Ioannis Borussis playing the best of his 14 EuroLeague seasons to date, Laboral beat Spanish rivals Madrid and Barcelona twice each, one of which came on a spectacular buzzer beater by Davis Bertans that clinched home court advantage in the playoffs. Also reaching the playoffs from Group F were Seska, Barcelona and Madrid, as the defending champs survived a do-or-die encounter with Himki, thanks to 23 points from bomber JC Carroll. Playoffs regular Seska drew newcomer Cervena Zvezda, 
but needed every bit of its talent to escape Game 2 by a point at home before facing down a great crowd in Belgrade to sweep a series in which Karl Heinz and Milos Teodosic stepped up again and again. When Fenerbahce took on Madrid in a rematch from the previous season's semi-finals, centre Epe Udo dominated the first two games in Istanbul. He then broke the Euroleague single-season blocks record as Fenerbahce won Game 3 away, thereby ensuring that the Euroleague would have a new champion. The Laboral vs Panathinaikos series featured an instant classic in Game 2, when retiring legend Dimitris Diamantidis forced overtime, even though the host prevailed on 24 points from Darius Adams, the top scorer in the playoffs. In Athens, Laboral proceeded to sweep the Greens to reach the Final Four for the first time since 2008. The only series to go the full five-game distance featured Lokomotiv and Barcelona, whose Game 2 road win flipped the home court advantage. Juan Carlos Navarro's amazing shot tied Game 4 as Barcelona pursued the Final Four berth at home. But in overtime, Anthony Randolph powered Lokomotiv to victory and backing Krasnodar, Chris Singleton owned the fourth quarter of Game 5 to lift his team into its first Final Four. It's Game 5, I mean, you gotta leave it all on the court, it's win or go home. And, uh, I mean, I got open shots, I made them, I was just aggressive, just leaving my teammates. Thanks man, good luck in the Final Four. No sooner did the spotlight fall on the Final Four in Berlin than the semi-finals delivered drama. Lokomotiv fought from behind all game, but new EuroLeague MVP Nando De Colo took care of business for Seska with 30 points, the most in a semi-final or championship game this century. Not to be outdone, Fenerbahce and Laboral then offered fans this decade's first overtime semi-final. Luigi Datome and Costa Slukas tied it up in the final minute for Fenerbahce before Adam saw his game-winning attempt go in and out. In the extra session, Bogdan Bogdanovic took over, making sure that Fenerbahce became the first Turkish team ever to reach the EuroLeague final. And Sunday's championship game would prove to be even more dramatic. Despite Seska leading by 21 late in the third quarter, behind inspired performances from Decolor and Milos Teodosic, the smallest man on the court, Bobby Dixon, rescued Fenerbahce before free throws by Slukas put his team ahead 83-81. With the season on the line, Seska captain Victor Kriapa tipped in a long miss with 1.9 seconds left to mark the first time ever that both a semi-final and the championship game required overtime at the same Final Four. De Colos stepped up in crunch time, scoring 10 of his 22 points as Seska pulled away to beat Fenerbahce 96-101 in the highest scoring game for a continental title in 47 years. It was a tough season, like every season. Say this season we got a real team and everybody fight for, for his teammate. After eight years of waiting, Seska had won its seventh Euroleague trophy, putting a thrilling end to an extraordinary Euroleague season. to despair and everything in between. The Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four in Berlin was a non-stop whirlwind of emotions as the four competing teams and their devoted fans ensured that a thrilling season came to a suitably dramatic climax. The first game of the weekend saw Seska Moscow maintain its poise and determined focus to hold off fellow Russian challengers Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar and end its run of three consecutive semi-final defeats. Then 
became one of the most exciting semi-finals in years as Fenerbahce delighted its fans by racing into a big early lead. But the introduction of Ioannis Borussis allowed determined Laboral Cucha to come fighting back. When the Spanish team led by seven in the final quarter, it was the turn of Fenerbahce's fans to rally their team. Jan Vesely responded and Costas Lucas tied the game. But time stood still for 13,000 fans as Darius Adams sent up a last gasp three-point attempt that would have won the game for Laboral. Instead, the ball bounced agonisingly out and Fenerbahce made its reprieve by racing to victory in overtime. That set up a passionate championship game showdown between the team's best two teams all season as a pair of old friends went head-to-head -head on the sidelines. Thousands of Fenerbahce fans created an amazing atmosphere, but their heavily outnumbered Seska counterparts made themselves heard loud and clear when their team ran riot in the second quarter to open up a huge lead. But neither Fenerbahce nor its fans could be silenced, and the Turkish team made a sensational fourth quarter comeback. You got a lot of worried fans right now dressed in red and a lot of real happy fans dressed in yellow and black. The tension grew before excitement levels reached fever pitch as Fenerbahce took the lead with just seconds remaining. Seska was staring disaster in the face and on the verge of another Final Four heartbreak until veteran captain Victor Kriapa provided another dramatic twist by stepping up at the last possible moment to force overtime. The Russian team's fans were celebrating, but not the players, who knew they still had a job to do as they attempted to rise above the emotional roller coaster being experienced in the stands. In overtime, Kostas Luka sent Fenerbahce back in front, but relentlessly focused Seska strengthened its resolve as league MVP Nando De Colo helped build a steady lead, which Fenerbahce this time could not challenge. Seska's 96-101 victory unleashed a flood of emotions as the Russian team was able to bask in a combination of relief and glory, ending a traumatic run of late-season disappointments to finally savour the sweet taste of success at the end of a spectacular Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season, which left everyone wanting more. Overtime final in Berlin marked the fifth season in a row that huge comebacks have highlighted the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four and proved its status as a can't-miss event for true basketball lovers. That spectacular streak began in Istanbul in 2012 with arguably the most amazing comeback in championship game history. Seska was ahead by 19 with 13 minutes left before Olympiakos Pirel showed why no Final Four game is over until the last buzzer sounds. The Reds rallied quickly, but saved the real drama for the closing seconds, when Vasilis Panoulis, with his team still behind by a point, got the ball to his teammate, Georgios Printezis. Something inside me says that I feel like I will be the last guy that I will shoot. I will take this out. I don't know how, but I feel it will be like this. But anyway, as, as I said many, many times, I believe that uh, whoever is going to be in my position for sure had to make because uh, everything happened for one reason and uh, this day was our day. Olympiakos was back to its old tricks one year later at the championship game in London. 
down 17 points to Real Madrid. The Reds chipped away until Spanulis came alive with three three-point bombs right after half-time and never looked back on their way to another come-from-behind title. My team needed me and uh, I was not there in the first half, so I had to make something and uh, I did it. Though Spanulis collected his second straight Final Four MVP award, the triumph was an absolute team accomplishment. We knew that we would come back because this team has the, has the ability you know, to play these games and uh, is a winner, you know, never give up. The next year in Milan, eventual champion Maccabi Tel Aviv supplied the drama twice. On semi-finals Friday, Maccabi roared back from a 15-point third-quarter deficit against Seska to advance as Tyrese Rice scored off a turnover with 5.5 seconds left. I just told the guys to hang in there, to stay, stay in there. It was 10, it was 11, and it went down to 5. And I said, guys, remember when it was 10? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, look where we are now. You know, we got a few more minutes left. We can still do this thing. Two nights later, Maccabi and Madrid traded blows until Europe had its first championship game overtime since 1969. After he missed the shot to win the title on the fourth quarter buzzer, Rice erupted in the extra session to carry Maccabi to an unforgettable victory. Last year in Madrid, the latest Seska Olympiakos tug of war came in the semi finals. Seska led by nine points with under four minutes left before Spanulis reappeared with three late three pointers, including the game winner with just 10 seconds left. At the end, I know that if I'll be myself, uh, we can do it again. Comeback drama returned to this year's Final Four on both nights. After rallying to win its semi-final in overtime, Fenerbahce Istanbul found itself down by 21 late in the third quarter of the championship game, before Bobby Dixon rallied his team to take the lead in the last minute of the fourth quarter. But this year, there was a twist. The comeback team didn't triumph in the end. Team captain Victor Criapa saved Seska with a tip-in, and Nando De Colo took charge in overtime to send the title back to Moscow at long last. Oh, we never stop believing. We have so much experience. We know we need to fight until the end, and we've been in those shoes. So this is why we was focused on the last play. Even Nando missed, he was ready to support it. Five straight final fours, five classic comebacks. It's no wonder that the Turkish Airlines Euroleague is the home of glory. Let's take a look at the top 10 plays of the season, starting with number 10 in top 16 round 10 in Belgrade, Serbia. James Gist flying high to receive the alley -oop pass from Nick Kalafis, a tried and trusted combination. Kalafis to Gist. Number nine, top 16 round 12 in Istanbul, Turkey, and Marcus Slaughter with a sensational block of Vince Hunter for Panathinaikos. Great play by Slaughter. Number eight, playoffs game two in Istanbul again. Bogdan Bogdanovic for Fenerbahce. Epe Udo for Fenerbahce against Real Madrid in the playoffs. Gets the fans on their feet. And Udo seemed to quite enjoy it. Number seven, top 16, round four in Vitoria, Spain. Tesco Moscow on the fast break. Corey Higgins with an enormous slam. Under defensive pressure from Toko Schengelia, but what a brutal finish from Corey Higgins. This is the way to finish a dunk. Number six, regular season round eight in Belgrade, Serbia. Servena Zvezda with Mike Zirves misses. Quincy Miller flies to the rim. Final minute of the game. Zvezda in a must-win situation. Zirves trying to extend the two-point lead. He can't, but what about Quincy Miller flying through the air? Perfect timing from Quincy Miller. 
number five in the championship game in Berlin, Germany. Nondo de Colo tries to score to keep the season alive. Kriapa is there. Victor Kriapa with the rebound with 1.9 seconds remaining in the championship game. The last chance for Jessica Moscow to keep their title hopes alive. Had to score on this possession. De Colo couldn't. Kriapa could. And the game went to overtime. In the playoffs, game three in Barcelona, Spain, the home team get the ball. Tomas Satoransky races to the rim and finishes in style. Brutal one-handed slam from Tomas Satoransky. We've seen a few of these from him, none better than this one. Number three, top 16, round 13, Victoria Spain and Davis Bertans hits the game winner for Laboral Kutcher. Rudy Fernandez can't reply and Laboral Kutcher, Victoria Gasteis with a huge win over Real Madrid on the road to the final four. Davis Bertans with his team trailing by two gets the inbound pass immediately, hits the triple to win it. Sensational scenes. Celebrations from Laboral Kutcher as Bertans hits the shot. No time for Real Madrid to reply. And cue the celebrations for Laboral Kutcher Victoria. Davis Bertans with the game winner. Number two, regular season round seven in Moscow, Russia. Towards the end of a close game, Christian Ayenga for Dinamo Sassari. What about that finishing? Huge dunk over two defenders. Amazing play from Christian Ayanga. No way he was going to be stopped. Number one play of the season, top 16, round 10 in Barcelona. The home team trailing by three. Justin Dolman in overtime at home to Jessica Mosco ties the game with just four seconds remaining. Great triple from Dolman. Still time for Cheska to respond. Ball comes in bounds, but Dolman's there again. Dolman steals it and hits the shot. Now Cheska, last chance. Nondo de Colo can't respond, and that's it. Barcelona gets the win. Justin Dolman with five points in three seconds. Incredible stuff. First Dolman with the triple. Then he steals the pass from Milos Teodosic. Then he hits the shot. Incredible from Justin Dolman. The concept is as straightforward as it is revolutionary in European team sports. The best will play the best. And they will do so every season from this day forward. That is the promise of a new era in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. One that begins in just a few months with the opening tip-off of the 2016-17 season. From next October, the first European Basketball League will take the stage. Best teams competing every week. Six months of competitions with our fans enjoying all European teams playing each other. This is, without a doubt, the biggest decision that the clubs have taken in the Euroleague basketball history. And this agreement culminates our vision that we had from the very beginning to create a true European League. Fans will no longer have to wait to find out when the best-known teams from other countries will come to play at their home arenas. Now, that will happen every single season. It's a championship, it's a round-robin system, so everybody's playing with everybody, and that, that's great, I think. Uh, and maybe it's more fair. So everybody's playing everybody, uh, home away. So I think it's, it's a good progress. No longer will the luck of a draw deny fans the opportunity to see their teams measure themselves against the greatest opponents on the continent. Because from now on, the biggest showdowns are guaranteed. For the fans, it will be awesome to watch. Many times you play against uh, maybe uh, Madrid, Barca, then you play against CSKA, the greatest team of the Europe. So that's going to be really, really awesome. And fans will no longer have to wonder when they will get the chance to see the biggest stars in person. 
because all of those stars will now play season after season in each and every EuroLeague city. The players will enjoy it because um, like most players like to go up against the best and now we have a chance to play every, uh, everybody in Europe and um, not feel like you didn't get a shot against somebody else or anything like that. So I think it's great for both the fans and the players. The best playing the best all season every season is possible thanks to a new joint venture between Euroleague Basketball and IMG. A collaboration forged on the commitment to lift club basketball in Europe to its greatest heights ever. The first step was to create the first true league in European basketball history, with every great team playing every other one at least twice every season, home and away. The new league with the 16 teams is something like a new NBA, so for me, Europe NBA. For me, is uh, something amazing. I think uh, that will be very, very, very good for Euro basketball. So, uh, for me, is one big step from the from the future of basketball in Europe. Along with top quality matchups every week, fans will also get more games than ever—30 per team each season at a minimum. The best of the best will continue from there to the five-game playoffs. And the winners of those series, as always, will be guests of honour at the best weekend in world basketball, the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. It's just great. You get to travel and play against the top competition in Europe. And, and after that, you will honestly be able to say, OK, I'm one of the top teams. I'm the top team if you win EuroLeague. In addition to more games, fans can expect to enjoy Turkish Airlines EuroLeague quality as never before too, whether in the arena, on TV or through social media. And they will see for the first time the best teams prove themselves against all opponents. I believe it's the best thing. I believe that everybody will have opportunity first of all to understand that you will meet all the great teams and uh, I believe at the end of the day that this is uh, very good for the fans. Get ready for the 2016-17 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, the start of a new era in basketball. The best is yet to come. More games, more fun and uh, more people to the arenas, more, more everything.